thought it was the best thing I've heard probably in my life, but treat every Marine slash sailor as if they are the one that is going to save your life. And he said that, and he's not even the captain that had Fireman Tilly in Captain's Mass three times, and still kept him, and Fireman Tilly was the one that saved the captain's life, and everyone on that ship. So you will never know the whole story. You won't actually know this background of where these sailors and Marines come from, and you need to give them the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, you keep that discipline, and you keep that standard, but everybody comes from somewhere. Everyone is an individual and hold them to the standard of the Marine Corps and the service and the Navy, but make sure that you understand that you do not know everything. Um, and then my favorite quote, just because it's awesome, was never argue with an idiot. The people watching may not be able to tell the difference. I'll just keep that from him. <laughs> All right, and then I would close with, you know, the Major General, but this guy is a four-star animal, he's also awesome. Um, but he kind of had a more laid-back approach. Your um, contribution to the Navy is your responsibility. Yes, they have things that they require from you, but everything else, that's on you. The sailor you want to be, the Marine you want to be, that's your responsibility to become that. Um, he also talked about the transition from being a student to being a leader. So like right now in college, what do we stress? We stress grades. Are those solely on us? Yes, they are our responsibility. They are all about us. Our main worries are about us getting through this program so we can be leaders. But when you get to this lead, it is about every single other person but yourself. Um, he also talked about someone who, she was an outstanding ensign on her ship. She helped all the other ensigns get qualified, get their swell pins. She took time to train her peers, and that just brought the entire level of the ship up that much higher. Um, he talked about charting your journey. So he gave four things. Obviously, integrity is huge. Um, just always have integrity. Then show up, he means both physically and mentally. Always be there, always be present, always be good to go. Um, be humble, and I think it goes greatly with just be grateful. He goes, be grateful for those opportunities, you, opportunities that you get. Know that you do not just get these handed to you. They came from somewhere and it was not on you. Like, you're given these opportunities and you need to, one, take advantage of them, and two, fully appreciate them. And in that, be humble. You did not make yourself who you are. All by yourself. Um, he also says keep habits. So, like, he stressed working out. He stressed um, making time for family and your loved ones. And reading, just like whatever your hobbies are, make sure you keep that. You're still a human. You still need your downtime. Make sure you relax. And that comes a lot. Um, and then habits just in regular life and how you work. Again, just being that dependable person. Um, he also, this was my favorite quote from him, you can make professional mistakes, learn from them, and move on. Like, that happens, it's going to happen. But you can never make a mistake of character. Because that is a flaw that's not, not acceptable in the military as a leader. And they're not as fixable. So, um, he also put a couple things on the end when he was answering questions. Um, never make a rule that cannot be enforced, because those are obviously pointless rules. Like, you need to make sure that you do enforce the rules that you make, because otherwise, you're going to make a rule and absolutely no one's going to be like, okay, cool, move on. And no one is going to follow it, no one's going to do it. So don't make these high, lofty goals and rules that you know can never be enforced. And then um, maintain your morals at all times. He goes, he was talking about this in respect to fighting enemies that don't have the same morals. Like, people that we're fighting right now, they kill um, whoever they want whenever they want. Like, they don't really have these standards that we have. And we cannot, just like the Iowa State basketball team, plays down to the level of whoever their opponent is because they think it's fun or something. We cannot stoop to that level. We have really to maintain it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was a little frustrated. So they did win. But um, you have to maintain the morals that we have as a military because you stand for America and the people. And we all know how upset the people can get at little things, let alone if you let big morals slide. So you need to hold yourself and your people to our morals and our standards, not your own. And on that note, are we ready to go? Get everybody out of here too, or too sure. late? Too late? Well, what's a mistake of character?
mistake of character, ma'am? Yeah. I love those. We crossed that line. There are some, luckily, enforced by the military, like drugs. That one will get you out. But um, lying, actually, ma'am, that's a big character flaw. And like I said, you need to be like. That doesn't always mean you tell everybody everything. Sometimes as an officer, you need to know what your people need to know, but you need to be mostly transparent. You do not lie to anyone's face, especially to get yourself farther in life. That's completely unacceptable. So, man, that would be insane. I'll just talk on that. The quickest way to get out, kicked out of OCS is integrity violation. So, if you lie once, they'll send you home. You're done. You're not going to be a Marine officer. It's stuff like that because you can't have a mistake in character. Yes, sir. That's his way out of the nuclear Navy is to have an integrity violation, too. Engineers have been walked off the ship and the, and the island of Guam. Like personally walked to the airplane to say, get off the island because of integrity violations. We're talking lying, commanders lying on PFTs. Say, hey, run this score for me. That got one of our commanders relieved. Another one wasn't completely divorced from his wife, decided to start dating again. That got him relieved. Those are character flaws that the military is looking at. Okay. A lot of times in the civilian world, we think, eh, it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal in the Marine Corps. It's a big deal in the Navy. Okay? So good character. Thank you, ma'am. All right, I just wanted to add, I kind of glazed over it because I got too excited to, about talking about our amazing speakers. It was just a great event for networking. They really, they talked about that a lot in the beginning. I was roomed with another first class who just shit selected out of Hawaii. So now I know this girl who, I mean, girl, fellow female naval officer who will be commissioning at the same time as me. And I'm going to know this person down in Hawaii, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to show up, and I'll be like, hey, Cheryl, how's it going? You remember that time we went to this thing? So it was an amazing networking opportunity. It was a great social opportunity. I know that Ro and Round Horse, they went and hung out with some of the other minutes. King and I went for a run, and this is their beautiful but enormous campus, and we got super lost. It, yeah, way. we got super lost and ended up walking 12 miles that day. So I recommend going, but like carry a map, like a paper Everything map. Everything looks the same. Find a guide. Yeah. Bring a dog and you smell your way home. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, we're going to do change this up a little bit. We're not going to do ethical decision games because of the time. I did get a note in my box. Somebody said, look, we need to end these at 17, by 1730. So we're going to try to make sure we do that as often as we can. Um, and when we look at...